Hello, this is Dr. Armand bringing you another exciting lecture in general chemistry uh, two. In this lecture, we'll be discussing how to solve problems that involve converting from one unit of concentration to other units of concentration. Namely, we'll be looking at what happens when you get a mass percent. How do we convert this to other units of concentration? A volume percent per se. How do we convert this to other units? of concentration and PPM. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. So in this example here involving different units of concentration, we're dealing with a concentrated solution of aqueous calcium bromide which is used in drilling oil wells. Its solution is 52.1 percent calcium bromide by mass and has a density of 1.7 grams per milliliter. Find the molality, the molarity, and mole fraction. So again, if we're looking here, what's important is it's given us the mass percent. In addition, since we're wanting to find molarity, it's given us the density of the solution as well. So this is the density of the solution. Now, since it gives us the mass percent, the assumption is we assume 100 grams of solution. So if we assume 100 grams of solution, we know the mass of solution. We know the mass of solute, and we know the mass of solvent. Then we'll go ahead and convert the mass of solvent into kilograms. So right off the bat, we know the masses of the sol solute, solvent, and solution. I don't have it. Now, since it's a uh, aqueous solution, we know that the solvent is water, so we can find the, the moles of solvent by looking at the mass divided by the molar mass. And we get 2.661. Now we know that the compound is calcium bromide. If we know the molar mass of calcium bromide, we can determine the moles of solute. Oops, that's not right. And it's going to be 199.9. So moles of solute, we get 0 0.2606. So now we know the moles of solute, the moles of solvent. We need the volume of solution. So remember, density equals mass divided by volume. So volume equals mass divided by density. So this would be 100 divided by 1.70. We get 58.82 milliliters. This is in milliliters. We've got to convert it to liters as such. So now we have everything to calculate the molality, the mole fraction, and the molarity. Molality is moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. Five point four four one, and this is little m. 
moles of sol mole fraction of solute. So this would be the moles of solute divided by the moles of solute plus uh, moles of solvent. And we get 0 0.0892. So that's the mole fraction of solute. Now molarity, we need the moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. And we get 4.430. And this is capital N. And so this is how you enter convert when you're given mass percent. Now going to look at another example. Now we want to calculate the molality the molarity and mole fraction of ammonia when we have a 8.8% mass solution of ammonia and it gives us the density of ammonia so again the first thing since we're given mass percent we need to make the assumption based off mass percent and that is assuming 100 grams solution so if we assume 100 grams solution, we know the mass of solution. We know the mass of solute. And we know the mass of solvent. And we'll convert this to kilograms. Now the solute is ammonia, so we know it's molar mass. And since it's aqueous, we know the molar mass of the solvent, which is water. So now we can find the moles of solute and the moles of solvent. So moles of solute, eight divided by 17. So we got the moles of solute. We do the same thing for moles of solvent. We get 5.111. So now we have the moles of solvent. We have the moles of solute. The last thing we need is volume of solution. Again, remember volume is equal to mass divided by density. So to find the volume, we take the mass divided by 0 0.9651. And we get 103.6 milliliters. And we got to convert this to liters for molarity. Now we have everything that we can calculate molality, mole fraction, and molarity. So molality, we get five point. One one five. Oop, little M. 
That's mole L. Mole fraction, we need the moles of solute divided by the moles of solute plus moles of solvent. And we get 0 0.0843. For molarity, we need the moles of solute divided by liters of solution. And we get 4.54. Two. And that is big N. Look at this is how you go about converting mass percent to all the other different units of concentration. Now, in this example here, we have an automobile's antifreeze mixture is made by mixing equal volumes of ethylene glycol. It gives the density of ethylene glycol and the molar mass. 62.07 is the molar mass of ethylene glycol. Water is a solvent, gives us the density of water at 20 degrees Celsius. And it gives us the density of the mixture. Express this concentration of ethylene glycol as molarity, molality, and mass percent. So we'll make one correction here. Instead of mole fraction, we're going to put mass percent of solute. All right. So here we are mixing equal volumes of ethylene glycol. So we we're talking about volumes. The assumption here that we make is we assume 100 milliliters of solution. So if we assume 100 milliliters of solution, we know the volume of solution is 100 milliliters. We can find the volume of solvent is 50 milliliters and the volume of solute equals 50 milliliters because remember it's equal volume so if you have 100 milliliters of solution you know 2x equals 100 x equals 50. And it gives us the density of ethylene glycol, the density of water, and the density of the mixture, aka solution. So with the densities of um, water and ethylene glycol, we can determine the mass of solvent and solute. So now that we know the volume of solvent, the volume of solute, actually since it said equal volumes of ethylene glycol, when we find the mass of solution, it's going to be from the mass of solute plus the mass of solvent. Because we have equal volumes of solute and solvent, so then we're going to take and find the mass of solution by adding the mass of solute and mass of solvent to it because we have 50 milliliters of each is equal molar or equal volumes of the two. So now to find the mass of solute, remember mass equals volume times density.
we get 55.7. And then the mass of solvent, we take the mass times the density, 50 grams. So now we're going to add these two together to get the mass of solution. And we get the mass of solution. Um, one correction is the volume of solution. We shouldn't have made the approximation based on that. Our assumption is 50 milliliters of solute and solvent. Because it says equal volumes, you can choose any set of equal volumes. So I choose that the we have 50 mils of solute and 50 mils of solvent. Now, if you use just the additive volumes, you get the volume to be 100. Or if you use the, so the volume of solution is 100 milliliters, or if you use the mass of solution, divided by its density, and the reason we're doing this is because we've taken 50 milliliters of uh, solute, 50 milliliters of solvent, mixed them together. Now we have a mixture whose density was determined to be 1.07 grams. So based on the mass of solute, mass of solvent, we found the mass of solution. From the mass of solution, we can find the volume of solution. Because why else would they give us the density of the mixture if we were just to assume 100 milliliters of solution? And we get 98.8. Milliliters, very close to a hundred. Convert this to liters, zero point zero nine eight eight liters. So now we have the volume of solution. We have the mass of solute, mass of solution, mass of solvent. Now we need to find the moles of solute. So it gives us the molar mass of ethylene glycol. We get zero. That's the moles of solute. The moles of solvent. Again, we're using water. So molar mass of water is 18. And now we have the moles of solvent. So we can calculate the molality. Moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. So we convert 50 grams into kilograms, we get 0.5. So now molality becomes 17.95 because we have the moles of solute and we have the kilograms of salt.
Next, we want to calculate the mass percent. So we need the mass of solute divided by mass of solution. times 100. And we get 52.7%. Now we want molarity. So it's moles of solute divided by liters of solution. We get 9.082. So let me double check my work. Okay, so again, our assumption was 50 milliliters of solute and solvent because it says we made a mixture by make, mixing equal volumes of ethylene glycol. Now we have a little bit of a different one. We want to know if we have a solution that contains 25 ppm of calcium chloride, what is the molality and mass percent of this solution? So PPM is another unit of concentration, which equals the mass of solute divided by mass of solution times 10 to the 6. Now, when we're given PPM, we assume 1 gram of solution. So if we have one gram of solution, we already know the mass of solution. And we can convert that to nothing. Yeah. So we need to find the mass of solute, mass of solvent. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up, so we have 25 ppm, so 25 equals mass of solute divided by 1 times 10 to the 6. So if we work this around, we get mass of solute equals 2.5, 10 to the negative, times 10 to the negative 5. So that's the mass of solute. Now we subtract that from 1 to get the mass of solvent. You get zero point nine 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 seven five and then we gotta convert this to kilograms So let me change this from mole fraction of solute to mass percent. So the only thing we're missing here is the moles of solute. So it gives us the molar mass of calcium chloride. So we can find the moles of solute.
and we get 2.252 to the negative 7. So now we have the moles of solute. We have the kilograms of solvent. We can find the molality. And we get roughly 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 molal. So that's the molality of the solution. Now we can find the mass percent. we get 0.0025%. So we were able to calculate the molality of a 25 ppm calcium chloride solution and its mass percent. Let me double check my calculations. So that concludes this lecture on converting different units of co concentration. I hope you were able to learn something from it. And if you liked the video or you did learn something from it, make sure to click the like button at the bottom. So at least I know I'm providing good content. On that note, Dr. Armand signing off.